much for joining us on the Lockdown Lounge. We really appreciate it. I'll leave it. This is, good. This, is good. this is a good time, too. It's a good time. <laughs> so I suppose um, for those who aren't familiar with your work, we should introduce you. Chris Capehart. He's a funny, charismatic, charming family magician, 50 years in magic plus, <laughs> dubbed wow. the ring master. <laughs> and he's also one of the greatest stage magicians of all time. Um, sharing the streets of Philadelphia with the likes of Penn and Teller, among some others. He's fooled Penn and Teller's, uh, Penn and Teller, rather. <laughs> and he has some amazing blue shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I got some amazing red shoes, too. You have some amazing shoes. Where did you get those amazing shoes, by the way? I have a collection of just shoes, period. I got like 47 pairs of shoes. <laughs> and uh, uh, one of them is, hold on a second, one second, here, here, here's, a, here's, a, here's, here's one of my favorite ones, hold on. Oh, wow. <laughs> These are really insane right here. I right? need those, they'll go with my shirt. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, this, this will get you stopped, trust me. He <laughs> <laughs> will come up to you, but, you know, most of the time I work in the red shoes, the blue shoes, I figure I'll just change up one. Oh, they were fantastic. I'm so glad that you got to walk off stage with those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, knew I, I knew I was walking off stage. <laughs> minute, we, were, minute, we were on the edge of our seat waiting. <laughs> the minute he said the word pin, I said, oh, okay, he's done. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's no pin involved. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. never, never, never. Good stuff. Fantastic. Good stuff. So my first introduction to you um, was actually after reading a Genie Magazine article. Ah. I think it was one of the biggest articles I'd ever read in my life about a magician. I think it was 20-something pages long. 26 pages. 26 pages. Fantastic read. <laughs> it was a wonderful read. I really loved it. And I really loved you from then on. I think I watched um, Just Kidding. Was it Kidding Around? Or? Kidding Around. Kidding Around. Oh, my God. That is, like, the best kids DVD I've ever seen in my life as far as magic DVDs go. You're so good with kids and so funny. <laughs> so tell me, as a magician, do you prefer doing family magic or do you prefer doing adult adult magic? Like, I know you're doing some sort of stuff coming well, up. Well, in, adult, um... magic, adult magic is the easiest. Yeah. Uh, kid magic is the hardest because... <laughs> As soon as people hear that I, I'm I'm doing a um, I'm doing thirty day a thirty day magic show in Pittsburgh yeah. next month, and uh, everybody who's come there so far did the adult show went home. Okay, did thirty shows went home, and as soon as they heard I was coming, all of a sudden I get a phone call. I said, "Well, since you're gonna be here anyway, we're gonna throw in an extra kid show." I says, "Excuse me, where, where'd that come from?" <laughs> so make sure you bring the kid stuff too. And I said, "Well." Okay, and then it said, uh, oh, but we're going to um, pay you less money for the kids show because it's just kids. I said, whoa, 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 that's the hardest. <laughs> you're, you're, they, don't, they don't understand that kids shows are a lot harder than adult shows. Adult shows, you can drop stuff on the floor, they'll applaud. Yeah. Kids, kids are going to go, boo, you drop it, and they'll never let you forget it. They'll never let you forget <laughs> it. Never ask, never ask. Kids, kids will say things that's horrible. Like, I asked the kid one time, I said, uh, you're hollering at me. Why are you hollering back at me? You shouldn't be hollering at an old person. They said, well, how old are you? I said, how old do you think I am? He said, they said, you can't be more than 80. <laughs> at the time, I was 40. <laughs> and then the kid, the kid added it. He said, and you're fat. Oh. Yeah, you can't see kids. They're out of control. They'll still say anything they want to say. I guess if you ever want an honest opinion, you know who to talk to. But they have no filter, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so you know, the best comeback I've ever heard from my in my life is like if somebody says you're fat, you go, Well, that's okay. I might be fat, but you're ugly and I can die. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's right. In the morning, in, in the morning, in the morning, you well, that the, the actual the really another joke. We're a guy who's um drunk, right? The, and the, the entertainer is drunk. Yeah. I think that's an entertainer is and they're saying, Hey, you know, you're drunk. And they said, Well, you're ugly. He said, Well, you're drunk, said, Well, you're ugly. He said, Look. There's a big difference here. In the morning, I'll be sober. In the morning, you'll still be ugly. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Come out that way. Oh, kids are funny. 
Um, so tell us, Chris, who is your biggest inspiration in the magic community? Like who inspired you the most in your oh, entire yeah. career? Well, who's dead and who's alive? You know what yeah. I mean? So uh, uh, Presto, who, who's gone now, but if you ever will look up Earl Presto Johnson, I, I met him um, back when I first started in the mailroom and he was like somebody I've never seen before. He did some things I never heard of before. And what he did was easy, but not for me at that time. You know, he did a sponge ball, you know what I mean? And then he put a, a straw through a coin and I was like, ah, blown away, totally blown away. I was like, totally blown away. I couldn't, couldn't understand none of that. And uh, so I followed him around until he taught me some stuff. And yeah. Then, um, then I met another guy uh, years later after I bought every kind of magic trick you could think of. I mean, I bought some stupid magic back in the day. You know? I mean, you ever buy a Temple of Benares? You know what a Temple of Benares is? No. Well, Temple of Benares is a big box that you put a girl in and you, you, you take off the top and boom, the girl appears, right? Yeah. Right, well, that thing at the time was like $500. And so I bought one of those. Remember, so I don't have a car. Okay, so I bought this big <laughs> box that, that you that you gotta buy a taxi every time you want to take it someplace, right? Which I've only yeah. used it one time, one time. And I bought like razor blade tricks, all kinds of men. And then I, I booked my first show at a college for $75. And I spent mm, about eight hundred dollars to do the show. Okay. Oh, yeah, it doesn't make sense. I know I did it. I did it. <laughs> And the, show, and the show went totally bad. The girl fell out of the box and, and the razor blade, I was afraid which one I was supposed to switch it for, so I didn't do that right there. And pretty, it was totally disastrous. And uh, Then I met a guy who said to me, read a book, Chris. You, 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 this ain't you. <laughs> Just read a book. <laughs> so I read a book and learned sleight of hand and ever since then, I've been happy ever since. And I make a profit now. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I make a real profit yeah that's it a profit is important though mm. yeah i'm talking about um shocking magic tricks you've ever bought i tell you what so i saw this promo for this fish in a bottle oh. and it billed as you could walk up to anybody in the street and take their bottle of water and put a cloth over it and then bang yeah, a goldfish uh, yeah, yeah, okay <laughs> <laughs> and this was in my my very early days of magic yeah. and i i saw this and went oh my god that's amazing and this fish bottle arrived and i looked at my husband and went what the hell is this what, the <laughs> like, magic that fish is not even gonna fit in that bottle i don't understand so, that, that's 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 how magic works right if, if you see it on the internet or you see it in even a description of it. It's always a great description. Yeah. You gotta remember something. People who invent magic usually don't perform magic. And they think, oh, look, it's great. Here it is, great. But never never been on a stage with the thing and everything. It's a whole new ball game once you get on the stage with it. So like most of the magic, like I would say like 80% of the magic that you buy, you gotta do something, fix it up, do something to make it work for you. <laughs> Otherwise, it doesn't work. I mean, I got a lot, I have a whole boxes and boxes of magic tricks that i bought that i've never used i think, I think we all have that <laughs> there's so many things that don't fit your personality you know what i mean yeah there are people who, who keep saying oh my god i gotta do that trick that trick doesn't work for you mental magic doesn't work for me you know no one no one let no one takes me serious with for mental magic you need to be a serious person yeah and make it and make it like like like, like max maven make it work for you make it make you make people believe that you have this power me, they just laugh at me. They, they don't take nothing serious, like nothing. So I, I gave up a long time ago. You yeah. Know? So I, I come on stage and I tell people that I'm Chinese, and they, and they, and they somebody, somebody believes it. <laughs> somebody walks up to me at the end of the show and says, "You're Chinese." I said, "Oh my God, listen to this." <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> you really went for that? What am I? East? <laughs> well, Southern China? You know what is? It? <laughs> Oh, dear, that's so funny. You that's know, it's actually funny that's, that you... Uh, that's, that's entertainment, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's funny that um you started out in the mailroom, like, in as a mailman, because oh, yeah. something that, like, you and you and I, we've spoken a fair bit, like, a little bit here and there, and um, I don't think I ever told you that I used to work for the Post. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I literally only left um, at the beginning of this year, but I was actually a supervisor for the Post, and I had oh, been working for the post for a long time, like several years. So there you go. We've got something in common. 
<laughs> but you're suicidal too. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be careful. Uh -huh. Don't tell, never tell people you work for the post office. Don't. Do oh that. no, they, they're definitely not the most favorite people at the yeah. moment, especially with the lockdown. Right. They, always, they, always, they always step step aside. They say you did, or they step sideways and get away from you for a moment. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Oh, so um. Do you think, as far as like magic is concerned, do you think you're always going to perform magic, or do you think you're going to I've be doing magic. Down? I've, been, I've been doing magic. I I started doing magic right after. Uh, let me see, right after about a year and a half, I worked. I, I I worked around with it, and the guy, the guy I'm talking about, Presto, he never let me call myself a magician until he called me a magician. Oh. He said, he said, if you ever call yourself a magician before I tell you you're a magician, then I'm going to stop teaching you right then and there. So, so for two years he never let me call myself a magician he took me to the magic shops and stuff like that he taught me stuff he said just because you know a trick that don't make you a magician that makes you a guy who knows a trick that's it so don't start calling yourself a magician don't book shows don't try to tell people don't get a business card don't do none of that just pay attention listen to me read a book when you can do a double lip properly we'll talk then when you can do a, a shift, you can do when you do when you do a side steal, when you can deal second seconds and we'll we'll talk, you know, and when you have an act, when you have some type of a real act. Them, not that you just put just walk outside, just start doing some trick, like you demonstrating magic. You must have a real act. So yep. um it took me a while. So um the my my first act was more like a, a gentleman act. Then that didn't work for me. Then it was more like a pimp doing magic. And that didn't work for me either. But I got a lot of women. But uh, <laughs> yeah, if there's still footage, act. I'm sure a lot of us would love to see that. It wasn't a bad act. <laughs> okay, that's how that's how I got my first wife doing magic on the train. Right, attracted her right there. That's and then uh, she didn't like magic though. She didn't like magic at all. So I had to make a decision there on keep the wife or keep doing magic. So uh, I'm still doing magic. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, but there you go. So the and then the, the, the good second choice. Wife, the second wife loves magic. I mean, well, so that's why. Yeah, me too. Well, that's the way it works. <laughs> that's the way it works. Yeah. You gotta get the, you gotta get the one that does what you love, likes what you do, and it really helps a great deal because if you got some negative thing on site, it's not gonna work. It has to be positive all around. This person that you're with has to like what you do. Right. Well, see, the, the only thing is, is that you've got to understand as a magician, and he understands that I'll wake up at two o'clock in the morning sometimes and go, oh my God, I need a piece of paper and a pen. I've got a magic trick. That's me. That's me. That's me. I dream There's about it. There's not a lot of people who can put up with that. And that's why you got to find that person. When you find that person, marry them quick. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. He's find, already proposed. Because you're not going to find another one like that one. Trust me, it's not going to happen. It's yeah, not going to happen. You find it one time, trust me, grow with it because that's why all magicians marry their assistants. I mean, from, from Houdini, from Houdini, the Thurston, the Keller, every one of them, they married their assistant. Why? Because it's cheaper. That's the first. <laughs> we, you can't keep paying people. So What's, that? What's that song? It's cheaper, it's cheaper to keep her. It's cheaper to keep her. to keep her. She works with you so everybody knows where everybody's at. See? So it, yeah. works, it, works out, it works out much better, much better. So, very much does yeah fortunately for me i have a i have a single one man act you know but a lot of things that's going on what i'm doing is my wife is controlling a lot of stuff off stage yep so, so a lot of things that i'm doing that's how that works you know so like so like your bank account and your wardrobe yeah, so <laughs> and tell you the truth i don't want you want to deal with that stuff you know i i'm doing tricks that's all i do is tricks so yeah <laughs> let, them, let them handle it right there i don't really care because <laughs> Uh, it, it, it takes away from all the stuff that you don't want to concentrate on. You want to concentrate on tricks. You want to concentrate on tricks, entertainment. What can you? What you going to be saying to these people? Who say how you going to look? You know what I mean? You got to get. A, you got to get a look. You got to look at a look. You got to get a style. This whole thing, which is why I'm going to be teaching in uh, the, uh, my street course. I'm going to be teaching at Penguin. I'm yeah. trying to teach people that you you got to when you come out. You got you can't look like the guy next door. The guy standing next to somebody else. You know what I mean? You can't just come out looking anyway. Look, I mean, look at you. I mean, look at you. Totally, totally entertainer, no doubt about it. I don't know about I don't know about him, but <laughs> definitely, you, you know, you got the whole thing. You got the name and everything. See what I mean? 
got a, a style. It, it, there's a style there. You just, yeah, and I can see that. I'm see that way over here. There's a style. You got to have something that makes you stand out from the rest. Yeah, when you hit yeah. the stage, when you hit the stage, they know you're the magician. No doubt about it. You see, no doubt about it. So it's very important. I start off the whole show because you don't have about about. I mean, you. Don't, I doubt you have a few seconds to grab the audience. If you don't yeah. grab the audience in those few seconds, you lose. I guarantee you're gonna lose. Okay, and uh, I grab. I, I use what I am. I use exactly what I am. I'm a black man, so I'm gonna use being a black man. But now, how do I make that funny? So when I walk out, the first thing I do is first thing they do is turn off all the lights, and then I scream like I'm upset. And I said, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! Turn the lights off. Black men don't work in dark." Bingo. <laughs> okay, right. Bingo. Comedy starts. They like you in the beginning, but we're, we're good. See what I mean? Yeah. Whatever it is, you got to grab them, and you don't have but a few seconds to grab it again because they got they don't know who's coming out. When you come out, boom, that's it. And then for that moment on, you can do anything you want to do. You can just take it that way. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. um, and then I didn't ever do what tricks I wanted to do at one time, so I had to have a, ch- a choice from all kinds of magic. So I use the excuse that I'm a master magician, so therefore I know all kinds of magic. So my character can do any kind of magic I want. At that time, because I'm proving to you, I know all facets of magic. As a master magician, you have to know uh, uh, stand up, close up, stage, children, adults, and all that. So you prove one by one that you can do all those things. One by yeah. one, you say, yeah, exactly. and you oh, you think I can't do? You think I can't do mental magic? Sure, 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 sure. And then here's a piece of paper here. I'll tell you what you're saying. You know what's what the, what's on this page? They say no. You take out paper. Says no. <laughs> You say okay, see, say oh, I can do that stuff, and then you then you dismiss it. You never yeah. really do it, but you dismiss it. You say, oh, I can do anything at all. What do you want me to do? Stage magic? That's not a problem. You know, take some cards out, do a few back hands and stuff like that. And you say, see, I can do this stuff. I don't feel like it. I don't want to, but I can do it. And all you did was give them a little taste of it. That's all. You know, so little by little, that's what whole thing of master magician comes from. So with the penguin lecture, um, the school magic. Um that yeah. is coming up in October. It's yeah. going to be a street magic course. Is that correct? Of course. Yeah. So do you have like a, a um, itinerary, like of what's going to be like on week by week? Like, is it, is, do working, people come in and buy the, the four, four, four week block or do they come in and like, pick? They buy, the, they buy the four week block. Yep. They come in Excellent. Four, week, four weeks and then we're going to do one hour, one hour uh, uh, a week. And uh, we give them slowly. We'll teach them how to build a table that you that you can carry. Most people they bring out something, they get bulky, they they, they bring out something, they put a, like a tray and all that kind of stuff. Well, it's a lot simpler than that. You should build a box with a um, handle on it so you can carry right yeah. uh, a tripod that's sturdy enough because on the wind, the week got to worry about wind. You got to make it look like something, so you got to put a cloth around it. You got to how how to get the cloth to stay on there with Velcro. And stuff mm-hmm. like that, and when, you open, and when you open the case, all all the things you need is in that case. And if someone tells you to leave, like a cop, you know, then it packs up in a hurry and get out of there. Yeah. And then, and then so when a cop comes up to you, well, this is the old days. A cop will come up to you, say, "Leave this corner." I say, "Okay, fine." You pack up, then you go to the next corner. Yeah. <laughs> and that sounds that like cop, something I would definitely do. That's what, that's what I did. See, and so. He didn't say, hey, he didn't say leave the planet. You know what I mean? He said leave yeah. that corner. Okay, fine. You don't argue with a cop. You just leave that corner and go to the next one. If he comes back up to you, he said, did I just say leave that corner? No, you said leave that corner. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> make up your mind. Make up your mind, okay? And he'll say, well, leave the neighborhood. Okay, fine. Go to another neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. And you just keep going until you... I mean, right today, there's just as much money today out there as it used to be because... Yeah. I wasn't working. You're not working for fame and fortune. You're working for fortune, period. Yeah. Street magic is not made for you. I mean, they see stuff like David Blaine and stuff like that. That's not true street magic. That's mm-hmm. what that is. Is a guy on the street walking up to people with a camera, with a director. It's you like Instagram I mean? magic on the street. Exactly. You know, yeah. there's a director. There's a director. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <And he> said, <laughs> that one. Let me film that. I mean, that's not. That's all crazy stuff. Real, real street magic. There's no director. <laughs> yeah, somebody might, somebody might punch you out. Well, and I think the most, I think the most daunting part of street magic too is the initial building the crowd, like yeah. getting that first person to stop, and then yeah. building from that one person. You know, it's it's a very challenging 
like if you're not used to street magic or if you've never done it before it can be very very make or break Um, for your career I i recommend people when they first start off unless you're not not like you you're not shy don't worry about yourself you do it Okay, it's shy people, people who who don't have who, who don't know how to be outward. Okay, yeah. and if you don't know how to be outward, then you're not gonna. It's not gonna work for you. But it will work if you learn. You start off a different way, so you don't start off with uh, street magic and say like going on any street corner. No, no, no. What you need to do is go to a uh, neighborhood festival. Yeah, a, a neighborhood street party, something like that. Now these are people you know, you've seen. And they're not threatening or nothing like that. So you start right there, building that crowd, talking to them. Once you start learning to talk to them, then you can move somewhere else. See what I mean? Mm-hmm. But um, uh, I always recommend, and also I recommend uh, this to happen with people who are uh, younger. Now, this is not an old man's game. I mean, you, when, when I, I, I did it was from the age of 19 to about, mm, I guess, you know, about 40. Yeah. Right. But, um, as you get older, it's more difficult to stand outside for 12 hours a day uh, doing magic. You know what I mean? I mean, you but does that mean I've only got two weeks left? Because I'm 40 in two weeks. <laughs> yeah, I, if you got the stamina, fine. I don't have the stamina. <laughs> I mean, even though the money is there, and I say, oh, no. Chris, no, no. did you just call me old? <laughs> you called yourself old. Because I said to you, if, if, if you got the stamina to do this, then you can do it. For, I know a guy who's 70 years old, still doing the streets. Yeah. I can't do it because I'm 70 years old and I can't do it anymore because I, sometimes I see these great days come up and I'm dying to, I'm saying, mm, there's at least $500 sitting in front of me and I need, I should go get it. But I think about it hard enough and I say, yeah, I'm going to the movies. <laughs> <laughs> it's over, it's over. You got to have the energy. That's all, you just need the energy, you know what I mean? Yeah. So if you got, if you got the energy, hey, God bless you. But uh, young people, they got the energy thrown out there, knock stuff out. They got to be able to run sometime. This crazy thing, I, I, in doing the course, I'll be telling some stories, but there's some crazy things that happen to you on the street that you would not believe. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's I am scary. so excited for this course. I can't wait until October. I'm literally <laughs> hanging on the edge of my seat for October to come. <laughs> Although to we have it. been locked down since June, so that could also Y'all, be yeah. contributing. Y'all been, lock, been locked down since June, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Australia is making headlines internationally for our ridiculous lockdown. <laughs> Yeah, so it, it has proven a very, um, very challenging for the entertainment industry down here, especially oh, yeah, well, there's I no imagine. street magic at the moment. So, yeah. well, you, get, uh, you get a chance to perform even live. Well, we've been doing stuff on Zoom, and that's about it. So, no live shows. No live shows. We no can't even shows. go to the shops more than three times a week at the moment. Oh, I, I feel bad. That's terrible because I'm, you know, I, I was doing Zoom shows for a while and. And I have everything, you know, I have like three, four different cameras and, and I got a stage section and I have a, a, a interview section and I have a close-up section and yeah. I have all these, I have a camera up on top here, camera over here, the camera over here. And I was doing like a whole year, I was doing Zoom shows, but none of it felt good. I did my first a live show about two months ago. And let me tell you, I felt like I would have did it for free. Yeah, <laughs> it felt so good. I could not believe getting human beings coming back and forth. And uh, so I've been doing. Uh, we've been doing live. We've been doing live shows everywhere. Matter of fact, a friend of mine, he did like twenty-seven shows last month. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, every one of them, right in person, running around, and everything. Right. I mean, we get vaccinated. I mean, did you guys get? Y'all got a vaccine, right? Yeah, we got vaccinated yet. Yeah, so I mean, uh, we we possibly will be getting our restrictions lifted or eased anyway at some point in October, uh, but it will only be for the people who are vaccinated. But because we all are in the entertainment industry, we also foresaw that there will be a lot of bookings that won't be available to us if we aren't be able, like if we are not able to prove we're vaccinated. So we made the decision that the vaccine was the choice that we had to make and we did it, so. We, we got, we, we have, um, we most of the places we go to, we have to show a vaccine place. Yeah. We, Matter of fact, I'm getting ready. Um, this Saturday, I'm going to Vegas. Yeah. And I had to, I, I had to send uh, a copy of my vaccine thing there. Yeah. Uh, where I'm going at, and I had to send it to the Magic Castle. The Magic Castle, you, you can't come in unless you're vaccinated and, or had a COVID test 
yeah. to prove it to two days before you come. <clears throat> so all that was just there, no matter what happens. Well, don't don't forget, we, we we haven't forgotten about your invitation to come to the Magic Castle with you one time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we're vaccinated. <laughs> so September, <clears throat> they changed September. Now the Magic Castle for the first time ever is is only opening five days a week now. Wow. Monday and Tuesday they're closed. The, the best part about that thing is I'm in September. So I'm in yeah. September the 13th, right? So I get there on a Monday. So Monday and Tuesday, I have nothing to do but go to the beach, right? Um, but they're paying me for it anyway. Oh, that's fantastic. Nice. <laughs> so I'm not arguing. Yeah, it's a tough gig, but someone has <laughs> to do it. Somebody has to do it. <laughs> so I said, okay, this is going to be great. Five days, that's great. I'm happy. That's it. So I'll get to go hang out in Vegas and check out LA. That's it. And, I can't um, wait until we get to come and, yeah. and see all the shows in Vegas and go uh, to the yeah, Magic Castle. Yeah. I want to see Copperfield on on, um, on Thursday, I think it is. Uh, oh, no, wow. Saturday. On Saturday, I'm going to see Copperfield on Saturday. This is the second time I've seen his show. Yeah. And um, and uh, hopefully, I'm all going to the museum. So oh, on, that would be awesome. Well, I'd be off and stuff, so, but... Uh, I had a little uh, discrepancy about a balloon trick I did on Pitt and Teller. <laughs> that was like a little argument there. Because, we actually uh, um, we watched a, a YouTube video once about um, the this guy who said he knew how you did it, and uh, he was totally, he was totally, we were just he was totally wrong. Oh yeah, it was very we obvious that he was wrong. So wrong. hard. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I put out a video just for him. To show him that he can talk about, oh yeah, the car, I'm blowing on the car. I said, really, I'm that good. Yeah. You, think a seven, you think a seven year old man can get precise breath and not yeah. the car? Down? That's amazing. I, I, I should got, I should have got an award just for doing that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I just have to say, like when when a lay person tries to explain how magic is done, it is so funny. They the the uh, amount of effort they think that goes into magic. The so yeah, he was yeah. going into the science of how the balloon popped and all this sort of stuff. And I'm oh, like, yeah, he said, yeah he heat and lasers and all sorts. <laughs> the chemical inside, if I shake it just right, they that's miss the one the you've seen it. <laughs> They'll pop this one, but they won't pop this one. Sure, it was. If it's a chemical, it'll go through all of the balloons. It, 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 made, <laughs> it made no sense whatsoever. But hey, he trying to get likes. He'll just put even. Yeah, he's getting his views. Uh, that's that's all that's important. To that's him, all he cares. He doesn't yeah. care if right or wrong. He just said, "Let me just put this out there." Well, that was the other thing. He goes, "I've got two ideas. I'm going to put them both on." So you yeah, don't you know got, how it's yeah. done. You've got he's two saying, ideas. Yeah, but he never says this is the right one. He says, no. I got two ideas. Yeah. <laughs> and I just think it's funny that a lay ideas. person thinks that they could understand how a magic trick is done, but Penn and Teller couldn't figure yeah. it out. <laughs> oh, that, how about that? How about that? Here are the experts, and they can't figure out. <laughs> he's right on time, ain't he? <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, it's classic. Um, <laughs> It's, oh. it's just it's, it's just the world we live in. They're they're crazy. That's a either way. I was happy with it because, um, uh, like I said, I I don't even think they knew how the uh, car trick worked either. I just got I, I just gave it to them, but I don't think they really knew how it worked. Yeah, you know? I just I loved your personality on stage. It was amazing because everybody, everybody thinks it's a reel, but if you give it some thought, I don't think you know of any reels. That you could just pick it back up and put it there, pick it back up, put it there, pick it back up. On Pin and Teller, we did that three times and they cut two out. <laughs> they cut the two out. That's why I had to put another video out showing that I can do it a hundred times over and over again without it. And I, I did it without even looking at it. I said, I won't, I won't even look at it. <laughs> now, I believe you've also said the balloon trick. Your initial uh, idea was to give the balloon to Teller. So it could be done out of your hands as well, right? They, and because of COVID, because of COVID, they wouldn't let me do that. Hmm. But if, when I was going there, that's what they wanted me to do. Let Teller yeah. do it. I said, that'd be great. Teller can hold it. And then I'll, I'll you know, matter of fact, Teller can, Teller can blow the whole thing up, hold it there, and I'll, and I'll do the rest. But they said they didn't want anybody close together for COVID. So that's what happened there. That so, would have been fantastic. And I'm, and I'm fine because... Uh, at the castle, you know, I, I let people hold it themselves. Yeah. And there's a, and there's another one. You can go to their chair 
and they can hold the balloon while in their seat, and you bust it while it's in the seat, right there. So you can do it a thousand. There's a thousand ways of doing these things, you know. Yeah. So, but but you gotta but you gotta find a way to make it entertaining. That's all. I mean, the trick is one thing, but you gotta make the whole thing entertaining. Right there. Yeah. Um, like the old saying is, if they like you, it doesn't matter what you do. But if they don't like you, it doesn't matter what you do. And you can do the greatest trick in the world. They hate you. Yeah. If they hate you, they hate you. <laughs> if they hate you. I don't care what trick you did. Matter of fact, you can do an hour magic show, drop one thing, and when they leave, they're going to talk about the one thing you dropped. Instead, <laughs> of, instead of this great magic show you just did, all they're thinking about is, oh, but he dropped that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. The whole thing is insane, man. So, Anything to stroke their own egos, I think. <laughs> that's right. It just that's the way it goes, you know. It just goes that way. It's and saying that if I did a show where I only dropped one thing, I wouldn't kick myself too hard for it. We went exactly. to a show not exactly. too long ago where everything exactly. went wrong for this poor magician. It was that's success. <laughs> but the audience only remembers the bad parts. It's like it's like a car wreck, you know what I mean? Or anything else. You know? Yeah. You know, guy racing around the track, you know and the guy won. In everything, but there was one guy who who died. Well, that's what they're going to be talking about—the guy who died, not the guy who won the race. Not the guy who died. Oh my God! Did you see that fire? Did you see the, the crash? See, yeah. <laughs> all they thinking about man. That's it. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. So, so I got a couple more things to do, and then um, I'm out here on an airplane and I'll get on the airplane, but I have to keep that mask on for about 15, 20 hours. Yeah. Well, we really do appreciate you joining us. This morning or tonight um, in Australia? Well, I, well, I really wanted to come back to Australia, but not now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, when everything opens back up and you get the chance to come back down to Australia, uh, even when it opens up, I wait a year. <laughs> then come back. Yeah, I'm still waiting. You are year. welcome at our house anytime, and we would love a, to have, have you. Ship, I have a ship that goes to Australia all the time that I'm really? always, yeah, because that's how I came the first time to Australia. I took a cruise ship Ooh. and I work on a cruise ship. So the yeah. cruise ship that one comes there all the time. So anytime I want that particular cruise, I can request it. And I, I come to, it so it costs me nothing to come to the We Australia. should fly over and cruise back. <laughs> well, well, definitely. I've Let done, us know I've when you. Well, the, first, the first time I came to Australia, I, I flew over and then took the cruise back home again. Oh, there cruise. you go. That's the first time I did that. And uh, like I said, that's why I, uh, I, I went to the, um, Went to the zoo there in Australia. The Taronga Zoo, the one near the harbour? Yeah, Sydney, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I went, I went to the zoo there and then I, I got to play with the little small kangaroos. What they call? Nice. Yeah. Yeah, they're kangaroos, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or wallabies, it might have been wallabies. That's it, well, that's the word. But then yeah. they kind of turned me off because uh, the guy took me to the grocery store and I saw in the grocery store wallabies. I said, okay, I can't do that again. Yeah, I can't play with my food. No, no, no. <laughs> to be fair, they are delicious. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what I can't. I can't do that. I can't do that. But they keep telling me, try this, they try that. No, no, I can't do. It. So, so when to... you come, when you come to our house, we'll we'll serve up some wallaby kebabs. No, 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 just hamburgers, <laughs> fine. Oh, well, it'll be hamburgers, okay. Yeah, they make they make kangaroo burgers as well. We'll do that. The secret to getting anybody to eat anything is never tell them the truth. <laughs> I believe we are the only country in the world that eats the animals that are on their coat of arms. So the <laughs> emu and the kangaroo are on our coat of really? arms. We eat them both. Unbelievable. Oh, man. That's different. That's different. Wow. Hmm. They are in different. ample supply, though. Very has ample anybody, supply. They are. Has anybody ever had one for a pet? Um, uh, you can get a permit for a kangaroo as a pet. It's not easy to get. Uh, typically, you're not allowed native animals as pets, yeah. which is very mm. odd. But here's an interesting one for you. Uh, emus are so numerous in Australia. We actually went to war against the emus in the early 1900s <laughs> with machine guns, and we ended up oh, wow. losing losing the war. We couldn't kill enough of them. They're, they're just... <laughs> There's millions of them out there. You have to you have to Google search yeah. this: the Great Emu War, yeah. Australia. Are you serious? Yeah, it's the only <laughs> war Australia has ever technically lost. We lost against the emus. <laughs> they kicked our asses. You know, I got to find that out somewhere along the line. I got to incorporate that into a joke. 
That's a wild, wild story, man. <laughs> well, it wouldn't wow. be a hard joke to make. An emu's got a brain the size of a golf ball. So what does that tell you about the Australian <laughs> army? <laughs> and you lost and you lost the war. Yeah. We lost the war. We got our asses whooped by a big emus. <laughs> <laughs> that's insane. That's really amazing. Wow. I don't know. Well, anyway, that's good. That's good. But you guys got to get back to work, man. Because we do. Yeah. Find out the longer you stay off, the more rusty you get. It is. Yeah, it's very so thank true. God for, so thank God for Zoom. Yes, thank you, and okay. thank you for joining us too. We'll let you go now. Um, we really appreciate. Wait, 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 wait. Where you go? I got. I want to say something. Have you ever seen this done? I want to ask you this question here. Yeah. Uh, uh, you've seen it done uh, with a card. Uh, you know the zigzag card. Yeah, yeah. You have a zigzag card? No, we don't. Oh, well, here, let me show you something. There's a zigzag card that you can buy. Uh, looks like this. Uh, let me see. Looks like this. It's, it's, yeah. just, it's, it's just a big card, but it comes with one of these. Oh, and yeah, you, I do have one of those, yeah. Okay, but it's a little do. one. Okay, but, but does it work like this? You know, if you push this out like that, you ever notice you can't take it any further? Yeah. Well, you can't do this. You can't do this. <laughs> and one thing you can't do, if you do like this, like this, you put it back there. And you do like this. You can't do that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Really? laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right, thank you for having me, guys. I love you. Thank you, thank you man. I love will you, Chris. be back to Australia, okay? Thank you so much for joining yeah. us. Thank you, guys. Enjoy your day. Bye. Bye. Bye.